for me, when he played with Manchester United, was the best time he ever had when he was used as an out-and-out -out winger. Russia used him as a kind of an outside defender as well as an attacker in Euro 96, and it never really worked out. See on the end of the bench there, Yoshev. You see Anatoly Bishevats there, just to the right, the end of the bench. The Russian coach, looks provided by Dimitrulin, and a wasted ball in the end. A big boot downfield by Adovsky, didn't really pay dividends. Mistake. Siding challenge, and the referee is going to intervene again. Oh, I think he should get a card. Janowski should get a card, does get a card, and you're going to see why. First of all, he makes a mistake in giving the ball away, and then he comes in with a wicked challenge on, on uh, Demetrudin coming forward. So two yellow cards in the opening 13 minutes. That one for Igor Janowski. And he joins the Ukrainian Vitaly Kozovsky in the book of the German referee Markus Merck. It's absolute bedlam here in Kiev. And it will be Rebrov to take the free kick. Looking for options. And at the back post, there's an option. And that's a goal. Popov was the man who climbed in at the back post. It's all Ukrainian jubilation. Uh, did we say it was a mistake by the Russians to give up a free in that situation? It certainly was. Rebrov knocks it across. It's going to take a little bit of a flick on here off a of boot. And look at the man coming into the back post and he gives the keeper no chance. Keeper's coming out on him. Popov is coming in at the right angle. There's the little bit of a flick on. That's what kept the play alive. And as the keeper goes across to cover Popov, there's the bulge in the corner. The old onion bag in the Ukrainians are off and running. Serhii Popov, the man who plays for Shakhtar Donetsk, gives the Ukraine a magnificent start here against their old foes. The game of the century, that's what it's been billed as here. They can give it up a free kick in a terrible situation. I mean, Russia should have learned what happened the last time to give up a free in this situation, but they don't learn and... Uh... The tension mounts. It's 1-0 to Ukraine. Everybody behind the ball for Russia here. Now there's a the drive. Desperately close. Both Shevchenko and Dimitrulin at the controls. Shevchenko. An upco. The Russians in the white shirts, if you've recently joined us here on ESPN. And trail 1 0, and things just not going to plan so far. On the politicians in attendance today, the president of the Ukraine. Big fan of international football, Leonie Kuchma. And, of course, Boris Yeltsin, the Russian president, was really the man who appointed Anatoly Bishevets to the job just a few months ago. Called for a top-class coach, and they got him. Here's the sweeping counter-attack again. Good numbers here for the Ukraine as they try to slide it through. And could it be a second goal? Yes! Skachenko. This is unbelievable stuff. Incredible stuff. Brilliant run down the middle. The ball is just screwed into the center and coming through. He just tips it over the keeper. Great run by Vaschuk coming up the field. He carries the ball. His distribution is not the very best in the world, but it does get there. And Skechenko puts it in. Look at that. Right over the keeper. He waits on the keeper to commit himself. But give a lot of credit on that to Vaschuk coming up the field, Derek. He carried the ball, and as you said, what a counter-attack. I mean, the big man just gained strides all the way up the middle. The man who plays his football in Russia with Torpedo Moscow makes it 2-0 to the Ukraine. Serhii Skachenko, after earlier Serhii Popov, had made it 1-0. There's confirmation from our public address announcer.
As that counter broke, he broke across from the right, he broke in behind. Half at all, Derek. It's that free kick by Kalivanov that went wide of the target. They're going to get a free kick here. Suspension of a high boot by Vaschuk. And Mostovoy is standing now beside Kolivanov. Mostovoy who replaced Alenichev, the Russian player of the year. Oh, he just came in at the right time. They're going to let him hit the free kick. He is a free kick specialist. See so if they have a trick up their sleeve. They flick it back to Mostovoy. And there's the free header. And they're back in it. A brilliant header from close range in the end. Minko was the man, it looked like, who made the late run. Well, you're going to see, we talked about the free kick specialist as the ball comes dropping inside into the box. The ball is knocked down into the back of the net. Varlamo, the ball Andrei from. Well, Karpin vowed that he'd never play under this coach again, but got a recall after that fiasco that happened with him in Cyprus Derek and now here he's back on the field again so I guess uh, politics and football make strange bedfellows and certainly there's been a lot of talk about politics in connection with this match many people on the Russian camp try to use this occasion to deflect attention away from the political crisis in Moscow President Boris Yeltsin said to be watching this closely, and a post for a penalty. Rabrov went down. Should be, should be. And this could be trouble for Karin. Yes, a red card. And he could have no complaints. A penalty kick. And the early bath for Dmitry Karin. And you're going to see why. This is a terrible play back by the defender, and the keeper's coming out. He takes the player down. I mean, he just cuts. He cuts him down. Rebroff is coming through, trying to get onto the ball that's not at back. The keeper makes contact with him, knocks him down, takes him down in the area. Should be a penalty call on a red card. He denies him the goal scoring opportunity. That means it's a red card. Hasta la vista, baby. Karin, out of here. This wasn't the return to international football that Dimitri Karin was hoping for. A penalty kick then coming up for the Ukraine the Russians will try to get Stanislav Cherchezov into the match the backup goalkeeper the 35 year old who plays in Austria with FC Tirol well he was the man who knocked Karin out of the job and it became his job and then he was involved in that fiasco in Cyprus he lost his job now Karin goes out and uh, he's going to get the chance to come in again and there'll be a question of who are they going to take off it looks like they're same out I think yep. yeah Samak, the number six, leaves the match so they can get the reserve goalkeeper in. Shevchenko may take this, give him an opportunity to score. No, Rebrov. Yeah. Ah, he was the man who was pulled down, so why not? Keeper wants to touch the ball before. Hey, let me let me get a feel of what this thing feels like. Yeah, I'll take it in here for a walk. Stanislav Cherchezov will try to deny Rebrov. This could put it out of reach. Rebrov for the Ukraine, yes! 3-1. Well, it had to be perfectly hit because the keeper guesses right. He keeps it along the ground. He keeps it wide of the keeper. And there's a lot of power on it. This is a well-placed penalty kick. Almost a brilliant save by the keeper just coming into the game, Derek. He almost gets his hand to it, just doesn't quite. And for Serhii Rabrov, goal number nine at international level. That makes him unofficially the top goal scorer in the history of the Ukrainian national team, surpassing Timurlan Husseinov. Previously tied with him. Teams that if you get an advantage, you've got to try to hold it. Andrei Hussein, 25 year old midfielder, trying to unleash Khalid Vintsev, and there's the drive, a corker of a shot. Rebrov was following up after great work by Khalid Vintsev, and what a beauty that would have been.
Oh, he pulled it back from the byline. Look at this, back into the middle and watch the shot. I mean, this was a rasper off the top of the crossbar. Keeper, look at he's looking. Where did that go? All I seen was a white blur passing me. If it goes down underneath the crossbar, there's no question about what happens to it. Instead, it just skids off the crossbar. Would have been a brilliant goal, Derek. Great attempt. <laughs> Indeed. You can see the Ukrainians are going to go to the bench again. Looks as though Valery Krivensov of Shakhtar Donetsk will come into the match to replace Kovalyov. Just trying to make that switch now. Kovalyov, who was the first player booked in this game, Departs the scene now. Krivensov is in. Well, just putting in a set of fresh legs at this stage. They want to make sure they don't create any problems at the back for themselves. A quick free kick, and they bundle it over the line again. Looks like a knockoff. An off kill the defender joined the attack. A defensive breakdown, and would you believe it, the Russians are still alive. Well, you should never bring a man in on a set piece to tell you, look at... And Upko gets in behind everybody. Well, I'm not sure if they're going to go by the World Cup rules. We're at 30 seconds for a substitute. Do there's quite a bit of time to be added on yet. A lot of space afforded Rebroff here. The measured pass, and there's no defense to speak of. Shevchenko teasing it to Romantic, trying to lay it back. And there's the drive. Almost a fourth goal. Popov was supporting. Made a good run off to the right. Sensibly keeping hold of the ball, using Miki Teen. And back now to Vaschuk. Oh, the Ukrainians very cool under a bit of pressure here. The referee's gone three and a half minutes now, Derek. Can't go much longer, can he? He's looking at the watch again. All eyes on Marcus Merck. He's glanced at his watch several times. There he is again. They're asking, when will he blow the final whistle? Well, there's the answer. A famous victory, this, for the Ukraine. The first ever meeting of these two countries. And the home team comes out on top against Anatoly Bishevets and his Russian team. Three to the final score. This was thrilling all the way. Back with more from Kiev after the break. Free kick. Looking for options, and at the back post, there's an option, and that's a goal. Popov was the man who climbed in at the back post. It's all Ukrainian jubilation. Uh, did we say it was a mistake by the Russians to give up a free in that situation? It certainly was. Rebrov knocks it across. It's going to take a little bit of a flick on here off a of boot. And look at the man coming into the back post and he gives the keeper no chance. Keeper's coming out on him. Popov is coming in at the right angle. There's the little bit of a flick on. That's what kept the play alive. And as the keeper goes across to cover Popov, there's the bulge in the corner. The old onion bag in the Ukrainians are off and running. Called for a top-class coach and they got him. Here's a sweeping counter-attack again. Good numbers here for the Ukraine as they try to slide it through. And could it be a second goal? Yes! Skachenko. This is unbelievable stuff. Incredible stuff. Brilliant run down the middle. The ball is just screwed into the center and coming through. He just clips it over the keeper. Great run by Vaschuk coming up the field. He carries the ball. His distribution is not the very best in the world, but it does get there. And Skechenko puts it in. Look at that. Right over the keeper. He waits on the keeper to commit him. This could put it out of reach. Rebra for the Ukraine. Yes! 
Well, it had to be perfectly hit because the keeper guesses right. He keeps it along the ground. He keeps it wide of the keeper, and there's a lot of power on it. This is a well-placed penalty kick. Almost a brilliant save by the keeper just coming into the game, Derek. He almost gets his hand to it, just doesn't quite. And for Serhi Rebrov, goal number nine at international level. That makes him unofficially 